Back to the trick house for more solving of easy, easy puzzles. Though, I suppose it's a welcome break after the last few worlds of Mario 3. And speaking of which, Mario 3 was the seventh LP I completed. Hopefully, that's the seventh of many, many more. And, oh, Broloom! Well, I don't imagine that's the kind of Pokemon that an NPC would use with great success, because Breloom is known for sweet combos. I love using that thing. So satisfying when it works. But combos aren't exactly the thing uh, Pokemon NPCs are best known for if you catch my drift. Has anyone made it to the end? Well, give me five more seconds and it'll be done. So, yeah, the secret code, Trick Master is cool, and the lock is clicked open, and we're going to get the same speech we always get from this guy. Anyway, that's four puzzles down and four more to go, and we get a smoke ball along with being almost his equal in greatness by three places, and now that this is done, we're gonna get out of, he of here through that back hallway again which somehow leads to the same door I went into the main room from but okay I don't want to think about this anymore because this guy is just bending the loss of time and space at this point now something that I completely forgot to do on my first time here and by that I mean the, the time when I went to the trick house only to realize I didn't have strength is to pick up this item on this island here and it's a rare candy and after that I'm going to go back the way I came use the cycling road to get back to Mobile since I don't want to fight a million wild Pokemon on the way there and after that I'm going to heal there and get the new Mobile assignment from Watson so, in the meantime, I might as well bring up the fake decks that, uh, as some of you people have called it, that uh, I mentioned a few videos ago. And while a lot of people uh, agree with me that those Pokémon look horrible, there are a few people who actually like them! Well, you're entitled to your opinions, people, but if the, the Generation 5 Pokemon really look as terrible as these, I don't think they're going to be very popular with the general public. And there, there, were, there was also the issue of, you know, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, there were no Zubat and Geodudes in there, so I said this is the ultimate proof that it's a fake deck, and some of you said, well, there are a few more obvious Pokemon that should be in any regional deck that are missing, like Pikachu and Magikarp and their evolutionary lines, of course. And then there's also the issue of Skarmory evolving. And I, I don't think anyone hopes that Skarmory is gonna evolve because it's already good enough as it is. But the, the, the thing that really pushes this over the top for me is the fact that Lapras evolves. Now, I don't mean to be a know-it-all, but Lapras is one of those Pokémon that I can guarantee you with 100% certainty that it will never, ever evolve. Its stats are way too high for that. But I'll come back to this a little later because I'm going to deposit a few items to make sure that I have room for all the swag that I'm going to get in the uh, in New Mobile, Smokeball, Rare Candy, that's okay. I'm gonna sell the Neck Mail eventually. I'm not gonna go, go make a trip to the Pokemart on camera just for that. And now here's Watson, and he's going to give me the key to New Mobile, which is sort of an abandoned power plant. Funny how New Mobile is abandoned, but the old Mobile is still, is, is still bustling with activity. And, okay, the generator has been running a bit, the wire is getting unsafe. Well, instead, well, of course he's gonna send me down there to shut it off, but if this generator is so important that it needs to run constantly, why not send someone to repair the, the generator eventually? Because once you shut it down, you never ever get any news from that generator again. It's just a uh, side quest, go to the end of this dungeon, do that, come back for the reward, and after that, it's never ever mentioned again. Team Aqua is here, so I painted that onto the sign, but then someone else painted over it. Team Magma Rules is what it says now. Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that 
If Team Aqua and Team Magma spent less time and money scribbling on on signs, then they might actually use that time and money and effort to train their Pokemon and team members so that they wouldn't fuck up all the time. Anyway, this is new Moville, and the gimmick for this place is pretty obvious. You got green switches and blue switches. Green switches open green doors and close blue ones, and blue switches open blue doors and close green ones. That's all there is to it. As for my battle strategy in this place, uh, there are Magnemites and Voltors with the very rare Magnetons and Electrodes. But yeah, my battle strategy here is that I'm going to use Double Kick on the Magnemites since it's super effective and flamethrowers on, Flamethrower on the Voltorbs. The reason for that is that uh, Voltorbs can have Static as their ability and Double Kick being a, a contact attack would have a 30% chance of paralyzing me whenever I nailed a kick with Double Kick. And if I needed two kicks, then, if I'm not mistaken, the 30% calculation would be applied twice, so it would act I would actually end up with a 51% chance of getting paralyzed with each double kick. But I think my Blaziken is strong enough to take down those Voltorbs in one kick, but that's not the point. The point is that I really want to avoid my Blaziken getting paralyzed. I want to avoid this at all costs because Blaziken is by far the best team member I have uh, that I can use in this place and whoops should have pressed that switch. There are some switches that you should really pass by in this place and not press at all and I didn't remember if this one was one of them or not but it turns out that this wasn't the case so this is one of the aforementioned vault orbs so I'm not gonna take any chances I'm gonna use flamethrower even though there's still that question in my mind, is Blaziken strong enough to beat them with one double kick instead of two? And by that, I don't mean two different attacks from two different turns, I'm talking about uh, each individual kick, which has 30 power. Anyway, I was talking about the potential for a Lapras evolution, which is, as I said, non-existent, because its base stat total is 535, okay? And the maximum that a Pokémon that's not a Legendary, not a Pseudo-Legendary, and not RK9, who has special status, the highest those Pokémon will get is 540. So you'd effectively be evolving Lapras for 5 stat points. Tremendous waste, if you ask me, especially when there are weak Pokémon, tons of them, that are crying out for an evolution, and improving Lapras's stats isn't going to solve the issue of it being worse than its stats and move pool would, it would indicate. It's just a matter of getting rid of Stealth Rock's dominance. Anything that's hit for super effective by Stealth Rock is instantly seriously handicapped, and Lapras is sadly no exception, which is a shame because I love the thing so much. And in the last video, I also mentioned the fact that uh, you could reactivate the Sinjo Ruins sub-event with uh, an Azure Flute Arceus, and I don't know if this is a sign that they're actually going to distribute the Azure Flute at some point. Cerebi mentioned it on his front page as well, that there's a possibility that they might do it, because they actually implemented that in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, and if they didn't ever want to distribute the Azure Flute, then I doubt they would have gone through all the, pr the, pr the trouble of programming uh, the, the second trip to the Sinjo Ruins at all in Hard Gold and Soul Silver. So that's getting some people's hopes up, including mine, because an Azure Flute. Oh yeah, because we can't have a power plant level without Voltorbs masquerading as Pokeballs. You know, even though Voltorbs are way bigger and heavier than Pokeballs to begin with? What the fuck? Anyways, I was saying, an Azure Flute distribution would mean that Arceus would finally be allowed on Shoddy Battle. Currently, I remind you, it's not the case, because Shoddy Battle cannot... Uh, cannot support the EV restrictions that Arceus currently has since the only legitimate Arceus someone can have are going to be at level 100 and that means you can only raise uh, its EVs through vitamins and well looking at the timer it looks like that's gonna be it for today and in the next video we're actually going to finish that never-ending side questing extravaganza